Hi, it's Greg Williamson, founder of 180 Degrees Mortgage Professionals Academy. Welcome to my video series on what broker owners should do in 2013. So the question I often get, particularly from smaller broker owners, let's say, you know, myself and a couple of team members and maybe an agent or two, uh, maybe I'm producing 25 to $40 million, $50 million, or a mid-sized producer, which is the same, kind of myself, I'm still pretty active in the business, do, my more, do all my own mortgages, and I have maybe a couple of assistants, and maybe I have two or three independent agents or more. Um, and then the large, really large broker owners who, as the owner, I rarely do my own business, I'm running the business. I'm recruiting, I'm training, I'm doing all of that I can do. And maybe I'm doing somewhere between 20 and 50. I mean, some of the largest brokerages, you know, brokerages in Canada, are, you know, no, not not too many at or over 100 people, but you know, saying that 60 people, that's a large brokerage. And so, in all three cases, my position is, is it's time to pivot. I need to be expect doing something different. I need to be creating my next big game and. And why is that? Where does that really come from? Well, I think it mostly comes from, I, I happen to believe that the next few years, and certainly this year, at the start of it, things are gonna be a lot different. Things are really starting to change. You know, the three biggest things that would put me in a position where I says, I need to pivot. I need to change what I'm doing. I need to change how I'm doing what I'm doing because the landscape is changing. And if I don't change, I'm probably gonna get flattened. And so one of those things is, of course, the mortgage rule changes. And I think the mortgage rule changes will do um, things that we, I think, already expect, which is maybe bring some, um, you know, just cool down some demand in the purchase market. And that's what's getting a lot of the attention right now in terms of not as many buyers are not able to purchase and all of those kinds of things. But I think one of the other things that it'll do that I'm not sure is getting as much press, but maybe it is, and that is it's really gonna cool down the refinance market. And I think probably even the resale market and a repeat business market. So as a small or medium-sized broker, or a large broker who has small and medium-sized independent agents, um, that's a significant risk to our business going forward. It's possible. It's possible. And I always want to go to that place. I think it's really risky in my business if I just go to the place that says, oh, none of that stuff's going to happen to me. Uh, it's different here. All of those kinds of things I think are risky because I'm not necessarily planning for what might happen. And so I think it's possible that if refinance and repeat business goes down or is lessened, re re refinances primarily because of the rule changes, repeat business will be you know, primarily because people may or may not be able to qualify to move on to their next home, particularly if through 2013 we start to, in some of your markets, <clears throat> if we start to really see a reduction in purchase price and our the prices are falling and therefore equity is shrinking and you know what happens there so uh, the second thing which I think kind of leads hand in hand is the slowing real estate markets in most of our markets so if purchase or pardon me, if refinance and, and repeat business is going to be maybe somewhat slower then Database marketing is going to be, or the, the way I used to do database marketing, or the way I used to work and try to get my databases going, I think that that's going to be a significant concern. And the slowing real estate market is, if that continues, and in most major centers <clears throat> that we've seen, we can just, we can not have anything to do with the data, but the data doesn't lie. So if we look at the data, we can see that it, we've had a significant number of months in a row where sales are less than they were year over year. And it's not just since June, in some cases it was before that. In other words, there was a lot of people, and you may remember that you may be of one of them, that said, you know, the market was already slowing before the last round of rule changes happened. And I think that's probably true. 
It's probably also true that the rule changes in June and July and the OSFI changes that took place in October, November, um, those things have not yet really taken hold, particularly the OSFI changes, I think, particularly around the self-employed purchase business. So if it's true that going into 2013, we're going to continue to see this reduction in sales, less demand, less purchases, what does that mean? Well, that means that we've got less leads. You know, there's just less business going around. And in the beginning, when that, you know, we go through cycles all the time. I'm not suggesting that this means it's doom and gloom. I am suggesting, though, that I should be prepared. And so, if that's true, that there are less leads from the two things that I just said, um, and the fact that bank personnel or road reps and or larger brokers or medium-sized brokers who are starting to get a little bit more desperate about the fact that their leads are drying up and so therefore their revenue might be drying up and coupled to that the increase that we saw in 2013 to traffic and success and interest in rate discounting sites so if that's the case that people start to get a little bit more desperate so they take the easy road and let's cut commission and let's do cheap rate so that we can get more business which I think makes sense if I'm a larger organization if I can handle the lower margin high volume business that probably makes sense for me but for a smaller broker I don't see the math I just don't see the economics of that making a lot of sense particularly because it's the thin edge of the wedge that I think that if we go down this road or if I go down this road of cheaper rate cut commission it just somebody will always be cheaper and then somebody will always be cheaper and then somebody will always be cheaper and so I'm just going down the road of eroding margins and for my business and so that's possible that I may decide that I want to do that but I gotta really be tight and keep my keep my business uh, lean so if we have the mortgage rule changes we have potentially slowing mortgage market and we have the increased um, popularity of rate discounting sites and the fact that if leads are less more brokers are going to want to go to rate discounting type sites or rate discounting environments or create their own rate discounting environment on their own website so if that's true or it's possible that it's true then I need to pivot I need to shift the way I'm looking at my business and so this is one of those times where I wonder, does anybody ever think that the margins, margins pardon me, in our business are going to get better? Or are they going to get you know, the same or less? You know, and so if all of that is true, then it reminds me of one of my, one of my most favorite sort of <clears throat> ways to consider strategic thinking. I call this the entrepreneurial growth curve. And so it's something that some of you may or may not have seen through some of my training, but I, I always tweak it and sort of advance it as we go along. But this is um, time. So over the course of my career or over the course of my uh, business cycle, you know, whatever it is that I want to be analyzing. <clears throat> so and this over here is kind of my emotions as an entrepreneur. What am I going through? now? I happen to think that there's a very strong correlation between how I feel as an entrepreneur, as, some, as a business owner, as a commission salesperson, whatever it might be, all of those I think are the same, that how I feel is highly correlated to my revenue. So if I'm feeling excited and invigorated and you know, passionate about my future, then I'm probably in a good place, things are rocking and rolling, and my revenue is probably in lockstep with that. However, if I'm starting to feel a little bit bored, or disinterested, or unmotivated about my business, then it's possible that my revenue is meh, kind of stagnant, maybe it's um, been trending slightly downward. And in the other case, if I happen to feel anxiety, fear, doubt, concern about my future, then it's likely that my revenue is trending downward and I'm in that kind of a really tough spot. And so how that looks graphically is something like this. Now, at various points in the entrepreneurial time frame and the growth curve, while I'm going through this, I want you to sort of think about 
where might I be on this curve right at this moment, at the beginning of 2013, and where we're going from here? So the first step is what I call point A, which is on the way up. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about things. I'm trending up, my future looks bright, I think I got a really good marketing plan in place, um, my business is growing, even in the despite of the things I said earlier, things are ramping up and things are looking pretty good. Or if I, you know, I've been in the business a year or so, I'm fairly new, obviously, because we just started, and I've passed through that place where the road less traveled where the you know people don't make it in this business and they crash and burn and so i made it past there so i'm feeling really invigorated and i'm really really motivated about my business and then the next point is what i call the critical point and by the way this isn't any specific time frame i think it means something for different for every person but at the critical point this is the point where I've been experiencing some really good times. Maybe it's the last two or three years if I happen to be in a real hot market or I've seen some really good growth in my business and I've been feeling really good. My, as I mentioned earlier, it's tied to my emotions. I'm really happy, I'm excited, I'm invigorated, I'm passionate about my business and my future, I'm feeling pretty good about it. It's also though, at the time that I never ever consider, rarely do I consider disrupting or making a change in my business. But it's the time that I should be making that change in my business. And because it's at the time when I'm feel, my tanks are full, I've had a good run, and I'm starting to see though that things might be different. Things are starting to change. If I'm really paying attention, and I'm really focused on strategic thinking, I can see that it's possible my, that things are changing, the things that I said earlier. And if I happen to be here, I recognize that for me to get to my next big game, I gotta make some changes. I can't continue. Here's one thing we know for an absolute certainty, that in any entrepreneurial business, you don't just start in the business and it goes up forever. There's always periods of increase, periods of plateau, periods of decline. It's always, always the case. It, some, a lot of cases, it's driven by me and the decisions that I make, but often it's driven by external factors. And so here's what we were talking about there. So at all times, as I'm traveling on this curve, there are external factors happening outside of my control, things that I cannot change that are making it difficult for me to consider the idea of, you know, how do I pivot? How do I make changes? I'll just keep going because things are so awesome right now and everything I do turns to gold and look at me, look at my awesome ride that I've had and this will just continue forever. That's when I've taken my eye off the goal. That's when I've taken my eye off the road. And that's when I get whacked. That's when mortgage rule changes come in. That's when slowing real estate markets come in. That's when increased comp uh, disc rate discounting sites and what other things that my competitors are doing, my bank competitors who are the road reps who are getting a little bit desperate for business and they cut more commission, they cut more rate. And so those are things I can't control. Only thing I can do is control how I respond to them. And so if I don't make a change here, then I may be at what I call the plateau. And the plateau, for some of you, and I know, I happen to know this is one spot where people often get stuck. And it makes sense. When plateauing, I'm just like, ah, oh, you know, business is on autopilot. Things have been going great. I've had two or three years of the same volume, or maybe longer. Remember, these, these plateaus can go on for whoever knows how long. Everybody's got a different journey. But if you're sitting there now and you're saying, hmm, I've had two, three, four, whatever, five years of very similar revenue, very similar uh, mortgage volume, then it's probably likely, check my feelings, if that's true for you, then it's kind of like, well, how do I feel about my business? How do I feel about my future? If I'm sitting here and I've had um, 
several years of similar revenue, similar mortgage volume. And today, I'm looking out into my future and I have thoughts of anxiety, fear, concern, or doubt, then I'm for sure headed to the next part, which is what I call on the way down. So on the way down is where things start to hit and it could be, remember this is an emotional journey, but it's highly correlated to my revenue. As I'm on the way down, I'm starting to think, wow, I feel like I'm not as happy as I once was. It seems like I'm making less money, but I can't seem to put my finger on what that is. Later in this video, I'm going to show you how that shows up. And so as I'm going down here, I still haven't made a plan. I still haven't made a pivot. I still haven't figured out how to get here. And so if that's true for me, what ends up happening is this. As I'm going down here, I'll just continue to go down. That's what I call the negative route on the way down. Now, if in this area over here, I've made some strategic decisions, and I've made some ways I've decided how I'm going to change, how I'm going to create my next big game, which is over here. If I've done that, it's still, I still will dip. Why? Because I'm doing something new. I'm trying a new marketing idea. I'm trying a new uh, you know, strategy. I'm trying something different in the way I sell. I've pivoted my structure of my business. I've done something new. Anytime we do something new, there will be a period emotionally of fear, concern, or doubt. And that's my resistance that shows up. That's an entirely different video in terms of how I battle that. However, the truth is that happens. I think you would agree with me. Because again, we know that I don't just continually go up. I have to make changes. And whenever I try something new, I'm going to have a period of decline emotionally. And again, sometimes, not always, but sometimes it's tied to revenue. So, but then what happens is I eventually hit what I call rock bottom. Now, remember, if I go this way, my rock bottom could be over here. If I've gone down on the negative route, that means I haven't got a plan. I've started to go over the curb. My revenue is being hit from outside forces. I'm not prepared. I didn't make strategic decisions here to pivot and do something different, do something new, and so I start to go down. And then, as I gather momentum on the way down, I'm way past scared because I still don't know what I'm doing. And this is where I start throwing stuff and I try a million different things. In the book, um, uh, Jim Collins' book on how the mighty fall, he talks about this is an area where people are businesses that, big businesses that crashed, they, did, they didn't navigate this part of the journey very well. They just kept trying different things all the time, wasting resources and you know, having, piling on failures which gives more momentum on the way down. So, once I get to rock bottom, this is that pine where I'm going to make that turn. Here, it's at the point, on the positive road even, it's at the point where I'm having the most amount of resistance. Maybe my ideas that I had, the dream that I set up on how I was going to get to my next big game is not working as well as I thought it would. Maybe the pressures from outside of me are bigger than I thought they would be. And it's at that point where I'm at my, my most likely opportunity or chance that I might quit, that I might not fulfill on that strategic plan that I had, this happens all the time. And if I don't navigate that corner, then I can go on a negative route again. I quit right before I'm about to take off and get up to the other side. It happens so many times. So you might be that person right now who's on the way down trying something new, trying something different, and the results have just not yet taken hold. There is so much theory on just before I'm about to turn that corner and go on the way up again, I quit. Right before, I'm, I'm just so close to being able to get it. And that might be you, so I encourage you to keep pushing. But if I'm on the negative route and I'm on the way down, then when I get to here, I really have one chance. I got one thing, I really have to create that plan that's gonna get me over here. 
because I can't just keep dodging or slow, you know trying to sit that this will change if I just don't if I don't do anything keep doing things old school get back to basics all this other crap that we hear and I'm just going to keep going down 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 until I can turn the corner again and then of course what happens is I'm on the way up again on the way up again and it's good times so what I'm seeing is if this is I think potentially a new business cycle it's a new way that we're going to do business I happen to think that if in fact it is going to be slower or there's less leads or whatever or slowing real estate market all of those things I don't see this thing turning around potentially as quickly as maybe it did when we had our last little slowdown in 2009 2008 for two very big reasons. Number one, in 2009, when we start, you know, the global financial crisis, interest rates plummeted to stir, spur on the economy, and the government was putting in more things like buying back CMHC mortgage, or CMHC buying back mortgages from the banks and stuff to increase liquidity and get the housing market going, because they could see the housing market as a catalyst to help the economy. I think it's pretty safe to say that we're not going to see big interest rate deductions now. How much lower can they go? And secondly, we certainly don't see the government having any appetite to spur on the housing market. If it, at any rate, I think it's the opposite. I think the bank, the government is actually, and particularly the Bank of Canada, is actually wanting the housing market to slow and have a nice soft, slow melt. Slow, you know, two, three years of slow, stagnant melt. If that's true, then this cycle is starting and it's going to, what am I going to do to make changes? In the next video, I'm going to lay out what I think the plan for the small, medium and large size broker owner should be given now that you have an idea of maybe where you are on the, the entrepreneurial growth curve when we're facing a start of potentially a new business cycle in our industry. So stay tuned for the next video.